it's uh, it's been a little while since I've updated proceedings with the C6, so I thought I should do that because tomorrow it's in for an MOT, and it hasn't had one sit well for just over a year, because uh, that's how MOTs work. But it's basically been sat for a very very long time. That four weeks, I was hoping it would just go straight in, do the business straight out. I've got a problem. I can actually activate the lights with the key. That's how cool this car is. Can you see the problem? Probably not. Look, it's dim. It not working. And the other side is the same, which I didn't realize until today. I knew that was there. And I thought well, I'll set the camera up because content, but this one is the same. That's a pain. Uh, these are LEDs. So I have fitted LEDs into here. I haven't actually checked the brake lights work. Maybe I should do that. Well, I'm going to have to change the bulb anyway, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Um, but basically I need to get these done before it goes in because it's going to fail. Um, I do I have LEDs because they're a lot brighter, um, because I like to stand on my brakes when I'm at the lights in an automatic and leave it in drive. There's nothing wrong with doing that, is there? And to sort this problem, I'm going to have to do some work on the C6, which is, I know, that is, well, that's actually not happened for a long time, um, other than that coolant hose. So, why is my battery soaking wet? Oh, no. My aperture is damp. See, the battery is hidden in here, big hoofing battery, but it's... Moist, and other horrible words. Uh, okay, I wonder why that is, that's a bit concerning. I don't even want to look under the boot floor. It's entirely possible that that's actually leaking, uh, coming in through the light. There's some little plastic wing nuts and there are some studs that hold the light in it what seems like opposing angles, which makes it even more fun getting it out than you'd think for a light that goes all the way from the rear bumper to the quarter light. Uh, and one that's shaped like a boomerang. So I try throwing it and see if it comes back. I'm not gonna throw it, God no. These are probably about a million pounds. Oh, I think it's just two, yep. Ooh, it's a bit mossy and dirty. Yep, so that's just two lights, uh, two lights, two nuts. Yeah, these are, okay, there we go. We're out. And then we've got individual, oh, well, I might as well pull all these off. Individual bulb holders, so it's not like a big sub loom you disconnect, you take the whole, you have to take each bulb out. That's fine, because I'm gonna need to look at them. There we go. It's a funky looking light, isn't it? Hmm. Now they are at the same angle. It's just, I don't know. Gasket there. Maybe the gasket's a bit worn. Maybe I should put a rubber washer. Up there. <laughs> All right, well, let's have another look. Let's see what the deal is. So I can operate these lights because they're all still plugged in. So you've got indicator there, two stop and goes, I believe they are. These are the LEDs. Yeah, that's a stop and stop and go, stop and tail. Yeah, they're both dual element. Birds again. And then this is the side marker light, which is amber. So if I operate the lights, well, we can immediately see what the problem is. That's pretty obvious. So there's your side marker light, little amber one. There's one of the stop tails. There's the other one. That is feeble. So if I swap these over, hopefully the problem moves because if it doesn't, it means I've got a problem with the wiring. You see, they flickered them when I put them in. It's because the car sends a little tiny 
char a little tiny current through to check itself before it wrecks itself. Ah, yeah, it's moved. Now the top one is dim. So it is the bulb. But complete coincidence, it's done the same thing on the other side, it seems. Weird. There are some scrotes outside. And uh, I was too busy listening to the broken glass and wasn't paying attention. And I've dropped one of the wing nuts that holds this lamp on inside the car. So I think the easiest thing to do there is going to be to get a different wing nut because that is gone. That is not coming back. And there's a bit of condensation inside this light as well, so... It's just... I haven't got LEDs for the indicators because it, it played silly buggers when I tried that. It couldn't deal with them. They flashed super fast. It's really annoying about that wing nut. Because it's not in here, it's going to be like, you've only got two little flaps of carpet, you can access it through, so you'd have to pull all this out to get to it, which I'm, now I'm not feeling that. So, in theory, should be the same again, yes it is, bright and dimmer, and if I swap them round, Let's see they flicker, flicker when they go in. Yep. Problem has moved again. That's quite odd that it's done that on both sides. The day gets better. I don't have any bulbs. I've run out. I've only got normal bulbs, which means I'll have to do away with all my LEDs, and that would make me sad. It really bugs me. Why can't you just buy LEDs that work? LEDs should last longer than bulbs. There's no reason why they don't. Sorry, Hilda. I need to cannibalize you for parts. And I had to turn these bulbs down as well to fit in the housing. All right, I'm gonna leave these off so I know that I've nicked them. Because, God, it won't even come off. Because funnily enough, a Hillman Imp doesn't have a blown bulb warning panel. Yeah. It's annoying, because they, they do work well. Well, when they work, they work well. What do you reckon? What the hell? What's happening? Right, my driver's side is working perfectly. My passenger side is... What is... Have I got... Did I get my knackered one and my good one muddled up? Yeah, I did. Yay! So these two bulbs are goosed. Right, it's going suboptimally. Um, but I think I've come up with something. So my lights work for now. Um, I want to stop the leak because I don't know if it's leaking that side because I can't see in there. If I could see in there, I'd be able to retrieve my wing nut, but I can't see in there. So I've had to go and get another wing nut, which is like that, which is nothing like the original. The original was placket and has a big flat back on it. And the big flat back lends itself to this rubber seal, this rubber washer, which will sit behind it like this. Ah, but you're saying, oh, there's a gap in the middle. You, you, there's nothing to govern how tight that will go. It will just keep crushing the washer until the washer displays, displaces itself. So I have an anti-crush stainless washer to pass inside. So it sits like this. So it will pinch the rubber, but it'll only go as far as the washer inside. Ah, but the rubber won't work with this, you say. Look, this is very true. Even if I put the washer in there, that's not gonna work, is it? 
another stainless washer. So the C6 will now have this, 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 and this. And I will drop it all. It's all stainless. It won't rust. So it's basically like that on the back. Yes. What? I'm going to put my custom washer on this side because this side is easier to get to. So that's the other side. Where's this one? Yeah, I think what's happening is the water is, well, could the water be getting in there as well? Do I need more washers on these? I think I might do, you know, because the, uh, the sponge seal here, you can see it's a bit crushed down, a bit flattened, because I mean, it is old, to be fair. It's however old the car is, 15, something like that. Mm, get some more rubber seal. Oh, I haven't got enough. No. Oh dear. Now this is starting to get awkward. I haven't got enough rubber seals. In theory, if I've got a rubber seal on the inside, I don't need one on the outside. I'll run without and monitor it. We'll do this real time. I'm going to run without and monitor it. So, sorry, Hilda, I need your light. Hilda's like, well, yeah, fine, have the light. Just fix my bloody gearbox that you broke. And it's true, I did break it. I, I'm, if I throw this, will you mind? In. There, like that. There we go. See, I ran out of time today because I've been too busy faffing around on a customer's car. And I didn't actually get round to um, like doing everything else I was going to do on this, like cleaning everything as I go. But to be fair, the C6 is a daily. It hasn't been for the last month, but it will be. Well, <laughs> It probably won't be for long because I can't afford to drive this car every day. It's too expensive. So I'm kind of gutted. I need to get it MOT'd at least, but then I have to decide what I'm going to do with it because I, to be honest, I don't know. I honestly don't know. Right, lights in. Yeah, equal brightness, both sides. Right, so I've jammed the brake lights on and it turns out it's only the bottom one that lights up anyway, look. Light bulb. Ah, oh, so that's why they've gone, isn't it? This one gets used a lot more, a lot more than this one. So they've both just expired. Well, that's rubbish. So what's if I put the lights on? Ah, oh, see, I can't do my light trick. Oh, hang on. So that's side lights and brake lights. Is there a difference in brightness? Oh yeah, there is. Yeah. You can even see it on here. So this one's actually gonna be the harder one of the two because the access to these is terrible. It's just two little tiny flaps. And I've got one finger and thumb to put all four of those components onto a stud that's upside down and do it up. But I've managed, brilliantly. Let's double check. Oh, what, no? What the hell, what the hell? My lights aren't working. I swear to God, you better be in some sort of battery saver mode. <sighs> oh, the anger that would have come then. Right, well, that's going to do it for there. A video where I change some bulbs.
for some secondhand bulbs. Um, sorry, I quite enjoy doing that. It's the other reason I've got LEDs. I like the way they turn on. They're just instant. Anyway, yeah, um, so MOT tomorrow, it's been off the road for the month, which means I've saved £55 in tax, um, or VED, and um, yeah, basically get it back on the road, give it a wash perhaps, and then decide what the hell to do with it, because I can't justify driving it, honestly, it's so expensive, round town it's 25 to the gallon. Even though it's a diesel, it's 25 to the gallon. On a run, it's not too bad. It's 40, 42. Um, it's made for long journeys, cruising on motorways. Uh, it struggles around town, which is predominantly what I use it for. So that shows you how stupid that is. But I love this car and my family are very fond of it. You know, it got us out of a hole last year when it went to France, got thrown into a trip to France, a car that people had written off financially. This was not viably, this was not financially viable to repair, uh, according to some people um, when I got this car. So, you know, the fact that a 750 pound, hugely complex car that scares people off. Okay, I'd done a bit of work before it went, but I hadn't prepared it for that trip. It wasn't supposed to do that trip. And it did it with no breakdown cover. In the middle of summer, it was like 36, 30, 35, 36 degrees. And it was nursing a broken coolant hose but it kept going it did really well and we're all very fond of it and it feels special to drive it it's it looks lovely i think i think it's timeless i don't think it looks its age um but I just, I can't. it's too expensive to run it's ridiculous government are pricing me out of it if you live in london you'd be screwed because it's not even ulez compliant so Right, wish it luck, MOT next. And when it fails, I'll do a video of me crying.